What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. Got quite a few topics to dive into here in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, PS5 homebrew looks like this could be a real possibility very soon. Thanks to this interesting tweet by Null Pointer. So Null Pointer says here, everyone has been upset about lack of updates. I get it. However, there's no straightforward solution. While others have been looking into full control over the PS5, I have worked on a solution that will allow some progress now. A real process for homebrew. More updates soon. And further down here, he says the firmware requirement has not changed. Anything vulnerable to the current kernel exploit will work. No matter how many times I answer, people keep asking about PS4. I'm not working on PS4. I've switched to PS5. You know this because it's been asked thousands of times. So to add some additional context to this, a while back, Null Pointer had a donation campaign. He was looking for donations to buy some equipment that would allow him to work on exploiting the PS5 hypervisor, which is the final step, the final barrier that we need to break through to get a full jailbreak on the PS5. We have a user land exploit and a kernel exploit on the PS5 up to firmware 4.51 from firmwares around about 3.0 to 4.51 are vulnerable. They have a user land and a kernel exploit, which would be enough to jailbreak a PS4 if we had that. But because the PS5 also has this additional security layer of a hypervisor, then we need a hypervisor exploit as well in order to get a full jailbreak. So he had a donation campaign for equipment that would help him do this. I think part of that equipment was this AMD 4700S uh, which is basically like a mini ITX computer that is built using defective PlayStation 5 chips. So obviously PS5 uh, CPUs and PS5 hardware that is, uh, you know, not fit to be put in the console, but can still be repurposed. And these would be a perfect test article to, you know, test out vulnerabilities because it's using the same PS5 chips. So if you find a vulnerability in one of those devices, then you could then try and implement that on the PS5 itself. So these are the kind of things that uh, Null Pointer was looking for, although I don't believe he actually reached the donation campaign. And I think there was some kind of animosity among the community saying that he just took the money, that kind of thing, uh, which isn't true. Obviously, he is indeed working on this stuff. So it looks like a hypervisor exploit, as we pretty much expected, is going to be very difficult and take a very long time. However, it looks like Null Pointer has some kind of workaround to allow us to run homebrew in the immediate term, which is very interesting. And this also includes emulation as well. As he says here, PS3 emulator could be possible, but it would be tough to ask for someone to port RPCS3. I doubt it happens. So yeah, emulators are also a possibility, not just PS5 homebrew. So that'll be pretty interesting because of course the PS5 is a much more powerful system than the PS4. So it'll be interesting to see how capable it is as an emulation machine. We've already seen how well the Xbox Series S and X work as emulators. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how the PS5 stacks up. Obviously, it also depends on the limitations of this implementation of this exploit. So it'd be awesome to finally have homebrew and hopefully emulators. And it looks like there's other, you know, homebrew developers in the scene who are looking into getting PS5s now because of this announcement, I, I would assume. Uh, as you can see here, OSM saying he's considering getting a PS5 to play around with. Prospero Toolbox doesn't sound right. Well, I don't care how it sounds. I would love to see it on the PS5. So that's what we have so far from Null Pointer. Hopefully we get some more information soon. And uh, I'll also leave his donation links down in the description if you want to donate to him so that he can perhaps get the equipment that he needs in order to be able to work more on the PS5 hypervisor itself. Okay, so moving on to some PS4 stuff now. We do in fact have a new build of Gold Hen that was released. Now this is more of a bug fix build, but it does include one kind of new additional feature. So as you can see here, we've got improved FTP self decryption. So this fixes the issue that I found in the previous version of Gold Hen's beta, which was that the self decryption was broken when you tried to copy an executable from the PS4 over to the computer with FTP. It wasn't decrypting it properly. So that was an issue that's now been fixed. There's also an improved XML slash SHN parser for dealing with the cheat files. We also have fixed cheat navigation after rest mode. So there were some problems with putting the console in and out of rest mode that was causing issues in the previous beta. That has now been fixed as well. And here's the new feature that's been added, which is the search subdirectories and show package path. In the debug settings, this is specifically for the package installer. And this will now allow you to install package files that are in subdirectories. So by default, 
Um, normally, if we take a look at this USB drive here, I've got a package file on the root of the USB drive. Normally, the debug settings package installer will only see the package files that are in the root of the drive, that are in the root of the USB. Or if it's on the hard drive, it will be the root of the package folder. And it will only look for the package files in there. Now, obviously, I have two other folders here, a homebrew folder and a games folder that also have package files inside. And by default, it's not going to find those package files because they're inside subdirectories. So if we connect this uh, USB up to our PS4 and then we have a look here with a new version of Gold Hen Beta version 2.4 B13. If we head into the Gold Hen settings and we go to the debug settings, you can see if I go to the package installer, by default, it's still normal. It's only showing me the package file that's in the root of the USB drive and not the ones in the subdirectories. However, if I go back out and I enable the search subdirectories option, and then go back into the package installer, you can see it now shows all of the package files, including the ones that are stored in those subdirectories. So you can now install package files from subdirectories, which is pretty handy. And it also has the ability to show the package path. If we enable this, it will show us the full file path on where those package files are located on our USB or hard drive. So that's the addition that's been made here in this new version of Gold Hen. Again, a pretty small update overall, mostly a bug fix update but it does add a couple of interesting features right there. So another thing that's been released today is a new version of the Apollo save tool. There was also been releases of a new version for the PS Vita and the PS3 a little while back, but we now have the PS4 version available now as well. So this adds a bunch of new features here. As you can see, we have network tools, a URL downloader. We have a simple local web server, being able to get full access to the console's drives. We have disable web browser history, which I believe is just the disable browser payload functionality built in. We also have a hex editor that's built in as well, an on-screen keyboard for text input. We have activate offline accounts with a user-defined account ID using the on-screen keyboard, improved internal web server online database support. We've got user-defined online database URL in the settings and improved DLC rebuild, uh, which read content details from .package file. We also have explicit firmware check when importing encrypted saves. So if we take a look at some of the changes here, if we go into the user tools, we have the activate PS4 accounts. Now this has been changed. So normally it was kind of awkward to try and activate an account using this particular software because you would have to edit an XML file on the computer to add in the account ID that you want to activate and then copy it to a certain location on the hard drive where the Apollo save tool will read it so that it would then show up in a list like this and you could select the specific account to activate. So this has been improved because if you do have an offline account that you want to activate, you can now just select it here in the Apollo save tool, and then it will open up this on-screen keyboard where you can just type in the account ID that you want to activate. It's, it appears like it randomly generates one automatically as well when you open uh, the on-screen keyboard. So you could just, if you want a random ID, you can just click done, and then it would do that, or you could you know, enter your own custom ID that you want and then apply it and it would activate the account uh, on the PS4. So that's a handy feature that's been improved there uh, in the Apollo save tool. Now, a couple of other things, we also have got our network tools now. So in our network tools, we've got a local web server. So if we enable this, it says web server listening on 192.168.137.122 on port 8080. So if I go to that location here in my web browser on my computer, you can see it gives me access to the PS4's hard drive. So from my web browser, I can now go on to like the data folder. I can then go into, I don't know, say the Apollo folder, find a save file, for example, and then download it directly to my computer, uh, which is one option. So that's a handy feature that's been added. Uh, if you want to quickly be able to download any, you know, saves that you've exported the decrypted save data for, and you want to just download them directly to your computer, you can do that using this web server. As soon as you click OK, the web server will be disabled. So you just want to keep that message box open while you're using it. Next, we've got the toggle web browser. So obviously you can have the, um, the browser history disabled or enabled. And then we also have the URL link downloader, which will allow you to download a file directly to the PS4 from a link, either HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, or FTPS as well. So those are some handy features that have been added in this new version. And of course, the other thing that's also been added in our save section, if we go to HDD saves and we select one of the saves, 
So if I take this save for Okaji Shadow King, you can see if we scroll down, we have hex edit game save file. If we select that option, it will actually, first of all, tell us, you know, which decrypted save file do you want to open in the hex editor? So we'll say vmc0.card and then we'll click OK. And then it will actually open up a hex editor, an in-app hex editor that you can use to edit the save file. So this is pretty cool. So obviously you can do X to increase value, uh, to change a value there. And of course, square to decrease the value. And you can basically edit the file manually with this inbuilt hex editor. Now this is more useful just for kind of being able to have a look at the contents of the file. Really, if you want to properly edit something, you're better off doing it in a computer, which is going to have a much more advanced and easier to use hex editor. But still, this is still pretty cool that you can actually hex edit from within the app itself if you just want to change one small value here or there, especially since these save files are not really that big. Um, but obviously, this could potentially be improved in future with maybe a search feature where you can search for a specific value or jump to a specific address. Those kind of features would be handy. Perhaps those could be added in future. But uh, yeah, this is really, really cool. So, and of course, if you make any changes, then when you press circle to exit, it'll ask you if you want to save changes or not to your save file. So yeah, pretty cool stuff right there. An inbuilt hex editor built into our Apollo save tool so we can edit our saves manually, which again is similar functionality to what the save wizard has. Of course, the PS4 save wizard has a hex editor you can open for decrypted save files. So it's just kind of mirroring that functionality. But again, with some additional features, uh, that could be really, really cool. Now, another feature that's been added is the ability to change the online database. So all of these save files that are stored on a server that you can just download automatically to your PS4 and import them. So that's a pretty handy feature that's there. But we now have the ability to actually change the link that it's using to download this database. So if there's any mirrors of this database that are, you know, in a server that's closer to your uh, region, for example, then you could get better performance perhaps for downloading these save files. But moreover, if anybody has an alternative database of save files, then you could basically switch the URL to that database instead and then start downloading those save files. So if we go into the settings, you can change it by going to the change online database URL and then just changing the URL in here to one that has a different repository of save files, for example, and then you could then download them from the online database directly to your PS4. So pretty handy stuff. A lot of cool updates they are released by Bucanero or Bucanero. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to cover here in this video is that Illusion has now released a fix for Resident Evil 4 Remix performance. We do in fact have a 30 FPS lock that you can enable on Resident Evil 4 Remake uh, for th all three versions of the game as well, 33387, 33388 and 35714. If you have any of those versions of the game, specifically you need to be on update version 1.04 but if you're on that version, you can apply that patch and get a 30 FPS lock in the game. Uh, so that, that kind of fixes some of the frame pacing issues. If you're on PS4 Pro, I think you need to be in the resolution mode in order for this lock to apply. And if you're on base PS4, then obviously there is only one mode. It will lock it to 30 FPS. It's more effective on the PS4 Pro because you get much better frame pacing as well with this patch. So you overall get a better experience. You don't have any wild frame rate fluctuations and you have a solid 30 fps lock uh, with proper frame pacing so definitely recommended if you're playing in the resolution mode on ps4 pro or you're playing on the base ps4 i would highly recommend enabling this patch obviously you can enable it from the items flow uh, game manager or you can enable it from the gold hen cheats manager in the patches section so that's up to you you can go ahead and enable it right there obviously you need to have the a gold hen patch plugin applied in order to enable these patches and there may be some more patches for resident evil 4 coming out soon as well so anyway that's it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again i'll hopefully see you guys in the next video